All right, I'm back. I got two hours before dinner, so I'm gonna try to get all the bearings in. Um, there's about a hundred dollars worth of bearings here, so I'm gonna try real hard not to mess it up. First thing I've got in the toaster oven right now is the clutch side cover, which gets two bearings. This guy which is a 6002 and then this also has a little tiny washer that I pulled out that goes behind the bearing that I'll put in and then this guy which is a 16100 16100 and it's got, they've got some weird bearings in this case uh, an E20 an L17 those are these guys right here those are the expensive ones um, the rest of them are like 6,005, 6,203, uh, fairly standard fare, but anyway, um, so I've got the clutch side cover case in the toaster oven. I'll pull it out and I'll put those two in. Uh, the only other thing I'll say is that bearings aren't the time to cheap out. So I bought Molossi bearings, um, you know, SKF Treats has got a a real good selection of bearings and generally in bearings I buy the most expensive one I know that's stupid I don't know which ones are the best I want the best so I look and see which ones are the most expensive and I buy them I'm just gonna sit here and try to figure out which one goes with which and um, some of them like the 6203's have covers on them so I'm gonna pull the covers off of these There we go. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and put this guy in. This gets the 6203 and this, which one's this one? The L17 or? Beautiful. Oh yeah, this one's done. Gets a C5 bearing. If you have the old bearing, that's always a good thing to use to knock in the new bearing. You put it on top, you whack it a couple times, you know it's gonna line up perfectly. There we go. Bearings are in. So I'm getting ready to put the two, uh, the two side cases together. The only thing that needs to go in between is the crankshaft, which by the way, I pulled those loose bearings off of out of the case and I just put them on the crankshaft. I think that's gonna be easier to put them in that way anyway. So those are on. And then, um, get rid of those. The crankshaft goes in, and then this uh, little tiny sprocket also goes in right there. Um, so this is that 6203 bearing. Uh, first thing that goes on is the, uh, the big huge circlet. There we go. Now the question is, am I gonna have to heat that thing up? to put this in. So this goes right through there. And yeah, I think I've got to put this back in the oven so that that'll drop in. And then after that drops in, this goes on the, oh uh, yeah, shit. Man, this is gonna have to get heated up too. 
Okay, so I gotta heat this up and this. I'll go ahead and put it in. There we go. I had to bang that shit in hard. <laughs> I hope that's all right. There we go. I had to bang that a little bit more than I wanted, but it's in there. Yeah, it looks pretty damn good. I was thinking I was going to put these uh, cases together, but I just remembered I have to do case matching first. I have to see uh, how my new awesome kit uh, fits on here and then see if I have to grind any out. So uh, I probably should have done that before I put this gear on, but whatevs. You know what, I don't think I am going to do anything to this. The reason being, this, these passages are so big that they, they're, they're just mating right on the end and there's not a ton of room right here. So I, I want to keep every little bit of meat I have there so that I can, um, so that the gasket actually seals up. Maybe just the tiniest touch. Let's... Okay. Yeah, I think I am going to just, just the tiniest little bit. Um, but not right now, because I got to go. All right, it's first thing in the morning, and um, I'm trying to get this engine put together today. Uh, the thing I forgot to do before I put the bearings in was do the case matching. Um, I'm really supposed to do that before I finish all cleaning, but I did finish all cleaning and I put the bearings in. So the reason you do that is so you don't get metal shavings in the bearings uh, after you put them in. Well, since I was stupid, I just went ahead and taped up those bearings just as a precautionary measure. I'm not doing a lot. I'm just, just kind of chamfering um, the, the transfer ports just so that they they flow nicely into the larger transfer ports on the Metro kit. So, uh, that's what I'm going to do right this minute. Shouldn't take more than two minutes. That's it. Just that much. All right, now I'll blow this thing out. Perfect. Yeah, it's, uh, it looks really, really good. All right, that's it. Let's see if you can see what I'm talking about. Focus. You can see I just pulled this down so that it flows nicely into the bigger transfer port on the metric kit. All right, back at the workbench. Uh, it's time to put these cases together. Pretty much the only thing that goes in between the cases are, uh, is this gear, which I've already put in, the crankshaft, which I'm going to put in, and, um, and then these two placement pins, one there, and one there, small side. Mm. Uh. All right, I put that uh, case back in the in the toaster oven. It's hard to get that crank 
Yeah, it seems like it should slide right in, but I'll see if I have to whack it a couple of times. I'm trying to be delicate. All right, here it goes. I have to crank a nice too. <laughs> Maybe a little bit helps. And you're talking about hundredths of a millimeter. Every little tiny bit helps. Come on, baby. Oh, worked like a champ that time. I just needed to heat it up a bit more. Okay. Um, I'm gonna go throw this in the, uh, oops, stay. I'll go throw this in. Next thing is to put the gasket on. I'm gonna put just a little bit of Honda Bond on it. Just on the outside edges. Super thin coat here, not, I'm not going crazy. Just that thin. And then again on this side. Uh, More just to make it stick where I put it, you know? That's all I'm really trying to do here. Go grab the other side. Put it on. Down there. Looking good. Let's see what I got here. I'm trying to, I'm gonna replace the screws as well. Just wanna make sure I get the right ones. This looks like one. Need four of these ones. I'm not super tightening these down. I'm just cinching them up. I've got a fastenal right up the street from my house. I'm not sure if that's a national chain or an international chain. But if you got one near your house, you should go there. It's awesome. Alright, let me look up some torque specs. Six foot pounds, which is 72 inch pounds. Okay, now that I have it all torqued down, I'm going to pull it back just one at a time. Pull them out, put a little blue Loctite on it, and, uh, and, and re-torque them as I go. Just tap, tap, just a smidge. There's one. In here, just so I don't lose my place, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do like an airplane mechanic and mark them that they're properly torqued. Nice to be professional on these things. All right. These uh, gaskets are connected, you know, when you get them, so you just gotta trim it off. Make sure you trim it flush or else it'll cause an air leak. I'm just lubing it up. Two cycle in the crankcase. ATF everywhere else. All right. Yeah, time for seals. I'm getting ready to put the seals in and I can't remember whether they go all the way down and butt up against the bearing or not. Luckily, one of the benefits of uh, recording everything I do in this workshop uh, is that I get to bring my computer in. <laughs> when, it's, uh, when it's time to put stuff back together and see exactly what it looks like when I took it apart. That's nice. Just putting a little bit of ATF in here. Get it nice and lubed up. All right, looking good. Um, all right, I'm gonna put these um, seals in. Uh, I'm just gonna lube them up a little bit first. Shove it in, I'll use the seat post <laughs> to push it down.
Beautiful. Um, all right, time to build this side up. All right, this is gonna be, this is gonna be hard. So, this has gotta be turned like that first to get it in. Get it, oh, come on baby. There we go. That wasn't too hard. All right, now I gotta put that, that spring in. All right, the spring. This is gonna be a bitch. Because it's gotta go up right there and then curl around and hook onto that. So that's what I'm gonna try to do now. All right, there's step one. That wasn't nearly as hard as I thought it was going to be. Woo! There's step two. Hot oh, damn. That was easy. All right, I'm gonna do this again. I, I, uh, I, I've already done this once. Shit. There it, oh, almost. <laughs> no. Let's try this again. Oh my god, that is... Oh, god damn it. Ow. F*** you. F*** you. Ouch. Alright, so I did this once and I couldn't get the sir clip on. And I'll tell you why. If you don't have that seal pushed in far enough, this thing won't seat down far enough in order for you to compress the spring and get the sir clip on. So, I've done that now. <laughs> and now I'm doing this again for the second time. Um, I push that seal all the way up against the bearing. So now, hopefully this goes in without any problems. Well, it's gonna have problems because of my snap ring pliers suck. There it is. Okay, now it went in fine. That was, uh, I just spent a half an hour trying to get that stupid snap ring on. So it goes spring, big washer, snap ring, small washer. All right, while that thing sits there and marinates, um, then we've got a little bit of work to do on this guy. Uh, this is the second gear, drive gear, the second drive gear that goes on the other side from the clutch that we're building. Um, there's some, some, I don't know what they're called, pucks? People call them pucks? I think they're like shift dampeners that are inside this that you need to replace. Um, so I've got to take this apart, put these in, put it back together because we're at that point of the build. So I'm going to pull out Impact driver. I've said it before and I'll say it again. If you don't have one of these, get one. Yep. That yeah, worked. There's one. There's two. There's three. <laughs> Try not to mess these screws up because <laughs> I don't think you're going to find these at your local hardware store. So try to keep those looking pretty damn good. That's where an impact driver comes in, comes in handy because if I tried to do that without an impact driver, I probably would have stripped the hell out of them. And now this thing should lift off. 
And here are the pucks. And actually mine look in pretty damn good shape, uh, believe it or not. I'm still gonna replace them just cause I'm in here. I wasn't expecting that. I was not at all expecting these to look this nice. So maybe somebody has been in this case before because these look brand spanking new. And then we'll put the new ones in. Link in description. And there we go. I put this back on. It is just that easy. Don't forget to put Loctite on these. All right, now we're back on this. Next thing on this is this, um, I don't know what you call it, starter, starter bell, probably. That's nice, you know, and I'm gonna put a little bit of ATF right here just to make sure it's nice and lubed. There we go. All right, so here's that drive gear with the pucks we just replaced. A little lube on there. There it is. Then, um, second gear clutch. There's, don't forget this little, this little nut thing. There it goes. <laughs> yeah, wiggle that thing down so it sits all the way. Got it now though. Then this thing. And then the first gear clutch. Beautiful. This guy, right there, and then this nut. I made a little mark on here <laughs> where it was before, so I'm just lining that up. And then we got to bend this lock washer down. All right, we're in the final stages now. Next is our uh, first gear, whatever. Or wait a minute, no, clutch bell first. I lost these shims that, that, that went on the end, or at least I think I did. I might have put them somewhere so I wouldn't forget where they were. And then I forgot where they were. I don't know, I'll look around and see if I can find them, but... I'd like to take a minute to point out that those shims are sitting on the clutch bell that's in my hand right at this moment. I'm a dumbass. Uh, I'm gonna need those. Anyway, clutch bell on next. And then there's this washer. This first gear clutch. Our first gear, first gear. There it is. Next thing are these little roller bearings. So, first Put this nut on. And remember this one's righty tighty or righty loosey lefty tighty. <laughs> so that's a little bit of a weird one. Um, I can't really torque that so instead I'm just gonna use an impact on it. Get it good. Maybe. <laughs> Ooh, this is gonna be fiddly.
All right, I wish I could tell you there was an easy way to do that, but there isn't. It's got pretty much zero clearance. You just gotta get it right in. Then this little weird looking cap. Go on there. Oh wait a minute, the shim's already on there. Never mind. <laughs> I was looking for the shim. It's sitting on there right now. I don't know. I've got, I've got a, uh, you know, black oxide screws. You know these. I've got these to fit in there, but I might want stainless on that since it shined up so nice. I'm gonna put the black oxide in for now, and then we'll come back and do stainless if I want it. If I decide I don't like it. There we go. Alright, so I got some screws to buy. I think I should be able to find those. I'm not going to do the ignition side yet because I'm not 100% sure what's going in there. I mean, the stock works and looks alright. It looks serviceable. So I could put the stock points ignition back in there. But to be honest, I think I'd rather have um, CDI in here. The only problem with the CDI is, I mean, unless you get the El Cheapo CDI, um, you know, for like 80, 90 bucks, it's not very good. And then the CDI that I actually want costs 300 bucks. So I haven't quite pulled the trigger on that because I gotta, I gotta get the wife on board for a $300 CDI purchase. Uh, so I think for now I'm just gonna leave it empty uh, while I work on the wife or while I figure out some other way to do it um, using cheaper parts. Bottom end is done. I'm gonna go get some screws right now so that these are nice and pretty um, and then I'm gonna let the Honda Bond seal up a little bit right now and then I'll fill it up with some uh, some transmission fluid and make sure we got it going right. It's amazing like how uncomplicated the E50 is compared to this one. This one reminds me of like an A3, I guess just because it's a two-speed, but uh, it reminds me of like an A35. Ah, mission successful. I got some nice looking stainless screws here. Now these are going in for real, so I'm going to lock tight them up a little bit. Okay. I think you'll agree that looks pretty damn nice. 